Welcome back after an infinitesimally long break. If that's not a word, well, it is now. Um, this is Captain Vulgarity, continuing on from my Bladed Lightning Let's Play. And as you can see, I've been kind of busy. You know, I kind of regret leaving you guys away without a solo LP for a while. Then again, you know, you have Vulgar Phoenix right and all that other, you know, good shit that I make. So, uh... You know, if you're not here to laugh, if you're not here to laugh, go on and go rewatch that other crap. I don't know. Anyway, uh, on this episode of Monster Hunter, uh, we're going to go hunt some Piscine, doing Liver of Legend today. That's what people asked for. And after that, um, well, you'll see. Anyway, as you can see, I have a full set of Velocipray armor and a Buster Blade. The Velocipray armor gives me this skill called Knockout Negated, so basically that means my character will never see stars, which is useful. You know, considering people don't normally like getting stomped in the middle of a fucking battle and then helplessly slaughtered to death against a wall by some inane creature. D you know, like if it was Monster Hunter Try, it'd be Lagia Crew. Either way, um... Time to introduce you to the desert area. The desert area is known for, well, areas two and something else. Basically, it's rather large areas, large expanses of desert with, uh, you know, heat problems. Areas two and seven. Basically, uh, this introduces the element of heat to the game. Heat slowly drains your health. It only happens in certain areas. In the desert, it's 2 and 7. So, you, in order to counteract that, you have to take one of the cool drinks you're given in the supply box. If you can't find any cool... If you either don't have cool drinks in the supply box, or you don't feel like going to going through this mission just to get cool drinks, um, you can pick some up from the guy with the, naps, with the knapsack in Kotoko Village. Um, now, it's time to introduce you to... The Piscine, or not Piscine, I think it's a Cephalos. Yeah, that's what these little sand sharks are called. And, <laughs> god damn, they're annoying. Uh, yeah, you only find them in the desert area. And the main reason you'd want to kill these guys in or out of any mission... Uh, in any mission, is to get Piscine Jaw, Piscine Fang for bone weapons, or or Cephalo Scale for some piece of armor that I don't care about. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. So yeah, um, there's... Uh, as you can see, these guys are pretty much like super versions of the Delix from Monster Hunter 3 and they're vicious they will knock they will knock you around without hesitation that's one of the things that this game was kind of infamous for it's that monsters were incredibly more able to like just bash you around and combo you to death you know if you thought that happened a lot and tried no this game compare the Renault flows to the Bulfango and the Delix to this guy uh, big difference. So anyway, uh, let's talk about how to unearth these guys so you can kill them. There's three different ways that you can do that. The first way is to wait and see if he'll just jump out of the, and see if they'll just jump out of the sand on their own, then chase them down and kill them. The second way, see, there's the first way demonstrating right there. The second way is to attack him enough to cause him to go flying out of the fucking sand. Either by killing either by killing him or just doing a lot of damage to him. Him, her, it, whatever it's called. I don't care much for monster anatomy, I'm sorry. Oh, anyway. Yeah, that's way that's the second way. And the third way is to use a sonic bomb, which is the simplest, but, you know, 
Sonic Bomb, you have to combine a Screamer with Gunpowder, and Gunpowder, you have to combine Fire Herb with Nitro Shroom. I think you can find Fire Herb in the desert, but I've never tried, so I, I just don't really care. I can deal without Fire Herb. I mean, as long as my weapon's relatively powerful enough, like you can see, it's... Well, in case you haven't noticed, uh, that little knife icon under my stamina bar, that is glowing yellow, meaning your wep my weapon is at the highest level of sharpness in Monster Hunter 1, which I'll just call Super Sharpness. It's green sharpness, and uh, I believe it gives you an attack boost. In other Monster Hunter games, it's a hundred and it's basically a hundred and twelve percent of the original attack power. But I'm not sure about this game. Uh, let's see. If it might be a hundred and twelve percent, but uh, you know, other games have higher levels of sharpness. But we won't talk about that right now. Instead, let's talk about getting thrown about by fucking sand. No, let's talk about their attack patterns. You notice that when they turn towards you, they disappear under the sand and then appear, appear like a few meters up in front of where they dove? Yeah, then they shoot sand and do that. That's basically the best way to attack them. One of the reasons I love great swords is for fighting monsters like these because they have a relatively good range. They do a lot of damage, and when you're yeah, see, no, look at how much he flinches. I just stopped him from attacking me there. Thank you, Captain Obvious. So. Yeah, what we're looking to get here is Piscine Liver. Piscine Liver? God damn you. Piscine Liver uh, is some kind of cure-all for the Hunter's Guild. I don't, I don't know the story behind it. All I know is that Piscine Liver uh, is a supply item or a quest item or something. The special quest item. Basically, you sell them for 300 zenny a pop uh, once you finish the level. Which is, you know, nothing to sneeze at, especially at this point in the game. Yeah, something to note about higher levels of sharpness, you can hear how... when I slash... when you slash the monsters with, uh, super sharpness, they ha... they... You hear like a more intimidating, gruesome sound effect. You know. Yeah, when it goes. That means you're doing extra damage because you're hitting a monster's weak. With higher levels of sharpness, you can ignore strong points and uh, find more weak points with monsters, basically. So having that level of sharpness is really helpful. So yeah, I just got three Piscine livers, which is the goal of this quest, but uh, I wanted to show something off right here. A little side area, Area 6. For those of you who don't know, it's a pretty good spot to mine. You know, you know, if you can call mining in this game good at all. Most of the time, the game just decides to screw you over and just give you absolute crap. 
Well, on top of that, there's Melinks in here, but, you know, sh they shouldn't be that big a problem. Especially if you have a weapon like the Buster Blade. They go down easy. Thankfully, because I, I was having a lot of trouble with them before. Now, I don't get very lucky with these mining points. I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah. That one iron ore, that's all I get from this mining point. Which is kind of sad, because the first time I got to this mining point, I got six of them. But, you know... You gotta get it where it comes from. You gotta, you gotta, you take what you get. You can't really change the way Capcom's being a dick. Let me tell you, disc stones are friggin' useless, except for selling. Like, I don't know, understand how a flat rock is more valuable than a plain rock, but whatever. The disc stones are used in creating... All that I know is that they're used in creating a weapon called a... The Defender and the Sentinel. Basically, they're great swords that specialize in defense. But it's... Which, I, I fail to see the point, because the sharpness of the weapon is pretty friggin' bad. And if you try to defend with a weapon that's not sharp, you're not gonna be able to do any damage. So there's really no point. I'd rather get, like, Ravager Blade and then Tactical Blade. I don't know if I'll be getting the tactical blade in this playthrough. If I do, that will be my ultimate goal for this... For... Yeah. Getting the tactical blade will be my ultimate goal. But it takes a lot to make the friggin' tactical blade. But, you know, if I make, if I make it and I make it legit, I can... I can safely say I've beaten the game and done everything legit and I'm a Monster Hunter veteran. So yeah, I got my I got a fourth Piscean liver just to show you just to show that uh, how much they sell for because I felt yeah why not. <sighs> so yeah. He hates the sun. He's be he's gonna turn into a nerd now. He's blocking out the sun. Didn't want to see it anymore. <sighs> he's afraid of the wilderness like a 13-year-old giant in Yugoslavia. I don't know what 13-year-olds in Yugoslavia are like. Um, yeah, something to note. Uh... Here's the Piscine liver. They're a pain in the ass to get, but, you know, they're kind of worth it if you want money. Either way, um, Piscine stuff, if you want, like, a lot, a lot of extra money, and you don't plant, and you're not really gonna make any bone weapons, you should sell it. This mission gets you materials that sell for a pretty good sum of money. For... Uh, about 460 for each Piscine Jaw and 250 for each uh, Fang. Whoa, back up there, buddy. It's a little early to be hitting on the on the shop lady, don't you think? Especially Cephalo Scales. Oh man, those sell. I don't have any interest in making a bone weapon at this point in the game, but uh. So, I'm just selling all this crap because I want to. 6969. Uh, I'm mature. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh, next on the list is Yeon Cuckoo. Yes, I'm finally going to be fighting my first Wyvern. Don't get your hopes up. It's not going to be an epic battle. Cuckoo's a, a bitch. And I mean that in, like, the easiest way... Po in, like, the nicest way possible. Because I get... You just smack him around. He's so fucking pathetic. Well, that's it for this episode of Let's Play Monster Hunter. Tune in next time for Yeon Cuckoo.
Captain Vulgarity. I'm gone.